Hello, I am Terry Ikumi. Welcome to Frank Conversation. Welcome to Hard Copy. The conversation still revolves around the NSAS protests, which was followed by looting of government warehouses by mobs in search of COVID-19 palliatives. And sadly, some businesses, privately owned businesses, were affected as well. While the violence seems to have subsided and new information is now available, the military has backtracked on its earlier statement, so also has the Lagos state government, not only admitting that the military fired at peaceful protesters, but also giving a figure of two deaths from the incident. The president also having failed to mention the Lekki Togate shooting in his address to the nation has now issued a statement on it. Tonight on Hard Copy, we'll look at a plethora of developing issues relating to the NSARS protest. My guest is lawyer and public affairs analyst, Liberus Oshoma. Mr. Oshoma, welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you, my pleasure. Now, with all that unfolding before our eyes, you know, the army is saying it was invited by the Lagos state government to disperse the protesters, and the Lagos state government eventually admitting that, it, uh, that the army was at the toll gate and actually fired. Uh, shot at peaceful protesters. What does this say of everything, considering that these were not the initial positions taken by the two parties at the time? Yeah, um, the, the problem is that, um, you know, it's a recurrent problem really with our government. Um, when events um, or when something, you know, of this nature happens, uh, especially when the people, you know, are reportedly to have lost their lives, you know, it's always customary for the government to first and foremost deny, a par, you know, blanket denier. And then when confronted with hard facts, you now see them coming to admit, you know, piecemeal. It, it's a, it puts a hole and a big doubt in the integrity uh, of whatever government says subsequently. So I had expected that when it happens, the first thing would be that, um, yes, we, we called on them, um, uh, we invited the military uh, to come assist, you know, the police haven't been overwhelmed or, you know, against the backdrop that um, the protest is against the police and that uh, we did not, you know, instruct them to shoot at protesters, you know, it was supposed to, you know, they were supposed to comply with um, laid down regulations and, but however, we learned that some people lost their lives. We're still investigating that, and um, we'll come up with a report subsequently. But you know, to come out to initially just admit or deny the fact that nobody died, and then that um, the military. Imagine also remember the military did initially also say that their men were not on ground. That people who were there probably were miscreant dressed in military uniforms, only for the Lagos State government to admit later that one person died, and then later rose to increase to two, and then the military came out to say, oh yes, we were invited by the Lagos State government. Initially, Lagos State government also denied that he didn't invite the military. And mind you, the governor also did say that um, powers um, beyond his control were actually at work. And, and, and so, for me, with all of this, it, it creates you know, very big doubt and lacuna you know, on the information management of um, the government. And, and uh, you know, no matter how much, now, how you know, of the sense truth, of they this. would rather well, the want... The statement of the military suggests, suggests that they were invited by the Lagos State government when things got out of hand. But I want you to clarify for me if that is exactly what you saw, because it would seem that things got out of hand when the milit after the military had opened fire on peaceful protesters. Is that exactly what you saw? If you, if you look at other clips of the military, like in a Korodu, the military came and dressed some of the boys around... And then the boys went home quite, quite peacefully. But from what happened at the toll gate, things degenerated the moment the military confronted peaceful protesters. And the moment the peaceful pro protesters left the streets, you know, the hoodlums and thugs took over the street. And then when hoodlums and, and thugs take over the street, you can no longer determine the extent of, you know, the damage that, um, you know, will occur thereafter. And so all of the blame, would, for me, the entire blame would rest squarely on the head of the government, starting from the Lagos State government to the military. And secondly, if you look at the provisions of Section 217 and the case of um, Bajabi Amila, Honorable Bajabi Amila and uh, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, where the then APC, while they were in opposition, did argue before the Federal High Court, delivered by Justice Buba, that the government does not have a right 
to deploy the army for, to monitor elections. And so, if you had argued then while you were in opposition, do you also have the power to deploy the military, you know, against peaceful protesters? And we all know, it is not even whether, whether you know, what I saw or what, you know, every other, even the government admitted that things degenerated the moment the military opened fire on innocent protesters. Videos are there, and, 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 and so it is not something to deny. And the denier also further infuriated the people. And now people are saying that the blood of the innocent, you know, must, uh, 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 there should, must be restitution for the blood of the innocent. And so it's not a matter that the government can sweep under the carpet by, you know, shifting blame. This is not a time for both And for the purpose of history, I think it's always right for us to find out what went wrong and how it can be corrected so that something like this won't go on, won't happen in future. And I'm not speaking about peaceful protests because that is provided for in the Constitution. I'm talking about the escalation that followed. Who, where do the fingers point to and how can it be prevented from happening again? Um, for me, the fingers should be pointed directly at the doorstep of the Commander-in-Chief of the uh, Armed Forces. And, and because the, the, the fact that the state, Lagos State Governor requested for military did not, uh, I, I say it clearly, the fact that the governor re requested for military does not mean that the military should open fire on innocent protesters. There are, there are rules of engagement in situations like that. There are, we have seen military engage civilians, unarmed civilians, you know, with words. Uh, and so, by, I also told you that by virtue of Section 217 of the Constitution, it is only the president and the collaboration with the National Assembly that can deploy military in such circumstances. And so even if the president requested from the chief of army staff and he responded to it, that response was an illegal response. And so the, the army was actually responding for, to an illegal response. And if that was without the permission well, let's go into the of the president. Proper now. It, it, it would seem that it's taken too long. Many would have expected that at least the CCTV uh, footage would have been released at this stage. I don't know if you share that position because you're a lawyer. Uh, but it's been 10 days now. Do you think that this investigation is taking too long? Um, I, I don't think a government is going to investigate anything. Um, because from, from the bulk passing, it is obvious that the government is looking, typical of them anyway, it's looking for a way to sweep the matter under the carpet, you know? And that's why initially it was outright denier, and now, subsequently, they admitted some part. And, and then, if you, you remember also, it was when the governor was even con confronted, you know, on international platform, that he admitted that actually it was the military. Initial, initially, the denier was that, you know, the military didn't do it. So with all of that, and yet, the government is promising you justice that they were going to investigate. The press president said that people were going to be brought to book. For me, the body language of the government is con conflicting or contradictory to their, their, their statement and position. And so I, I, I do not see them investigating their own action. Here's something I'd like to draw your attention to. You're a lawyer, and um, a few days ago, the uh, judicial panel of inquiry in Lagos started sitting, and we started seeing on social media that the youth representatives were being made to sign an oath of secrecy. As a lawyer, is that out of place? You, you see, it's um, contradictory also that um, the panel of investigation is, um, uh, the, the process is beamed live. And yet, you want the panel member to sign oath of secrecy. Yes, ordinarily, you know, all things being equal would have been proper. As uh, a member, and as, an, as an investigatory panel, you sign oath of secrecy not to divulge information gathered in the process of carrying out that um, uh, uh, function to a third party. But already, the panel is, you know, it's in the open. Memorandums are submitted, complaints are submitted, and they are read in the open. So, why sign out of secrecy when already, you know, everything that is being done is in the open? So, for me, that, that's, that's contradictory. And then, with the, the kind of, um, uh, uh, what do you call it now, the, the kind of doubt created by government in all the activities, if you go that, uh, you know, line, it will further, you know, create doubt and raise suspicion. Do you, from what you've said, do you also question the judicial panels of inquiry that have been set up in different states to look into some of the uh, misgivings? Yeah, um, first and foremost, uh, 
if we are actually, you know, why it is good to set up judicial panel of inquiry, to inquire into what happens, or to inquire into the uh, uh, um, police, to police brutality. Um, how much of the issues really confronting the police are we addressing? Um, it's, you know, we saw what happened with Oputa Pane. At the end of the day, we saw the, the report. You know, it's still gathering dust in the dustbin of history. And I do not see, you know, a difference from this one. You know, we make a jamboree of this uh, because we are truly not ready to confront the issues. What are these issues? First and foremost, is the government ready? Is the police even ready to accept the fact that they are wrong and apologize to the people for those wrongs? And they came out to say, no, you know, we are not a, an agency of saints or angels. That's where reconciliation starts from. And the, with the allegations that are coming up from, you know, uh, the panel, um, I really also do not, being an investigatory and inquisitory uh, 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 panel, I do not see the state government with the antecedent having the balls to actually prosecute some of these persons. Well, what have you seen that makes you doubt the process? Yeah, uh, thank you for, for, for that question. Some of the things that I saw, you saw the way the police paraded the people they allegedly arrested, the looters that were allegedly arrested. Some of them alleged that they were arrested, you know, during curfew. A lady of, of, of particular note was a narration by that lady that um, she was, she went out to, to uh, buy um, groceries for her children and then she was bundled into a waiting vehicle. These are some of the brutality that people had complained about, that people are still complaining about in the panel. And yet the same police, the same police in the process of arresting looters is still, you know, exhibiting the same mentality. And, and so what, when, we are, when we are done with this one, are we going to start with another round of uh, uh, probe into the activities of the police as regards the arrest made during the, the loot? And then when we're talking about looting of uh, public uh, uh, um, uh, coffers, the governors that we house the palliatives and the collaborators also, how much of them, are, how much of those are we looking at? And, and so for me, those are some of the I things think, I, I saw and I feel, to I want uh, to look, stay with to fulfill all righteousness, really. Reform. You've mentioned the, uh, the attitude of the police uh, during this whole process of investigation. When you see, uh, when you listen to the promise by the federal government that the police reform will take place, and in fact, it seems like it's already uh, commenced does it appear to you that there's actual reform going on as promised? Look, uh, like I, I said, reforms should start from reconciliation. And then you look at um, police saying they are going to evaluate the psychology and the mentality of some of their men. You now begin to ask you the question. With the same police colleges, the one in Kano, the one in Lagos, Reform should start from the police college, which is a clearing house for uh, uh, officers and men of the Nigerian police. Nobody's even discussing all of that. Reforms also should start from the remunerations of the Nigerian police and the mentality, the psychology, the barracks. Nobody's discussing all of this. Reform also should start from the implementation of the provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. Nobody's discussing all of this. Rather, we are so fixated on... Um, uh, the issue of, uh, yes, the, the, the president had increased their salaries. You know, how much uh, uh, percentage is that compared to the reality of the average Nigerian police today? So when you look at all of that, the problem bedeviling the police, you know, and why it is unattractive to the best of us had not been touched at all. And, and so if you make it unattractive to the best of us, you are still going to have the kind of people that you have with the kind of mentality, and they are still consistently going to, you know, create the problems that, you know, people are protesting against because there are no consequences for actions here. All right, I think we could take a break here and when we come back, we'll talk a little more on, on the investigation and then delve into the issue of palliatives, which has raised a lot of reactions. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Hard Copy. My guest is lawyer and public affairs analyst, Liberos Oshoma. We're looking at new developments from the end south protests i'd like us to conclude on this investigative process we saw we saw governors ministers visit a crime scene which many people have uh, questioned <laughs> in fact we saw the minister of uh, works 
find a camera and handle that camera, which many consider to be evidence and considered laughable. What's your take <laughs> on that? Uh, you, you see, the essence, uh, I think at this stage, um, government should be informed that the essence of having CCTV, CCTV cameras in places such as that um, is to ensure that uh, the events of um, uh, activities of mishap of this nature, the first thing that should be in the open should be, you know, the footages of the CCTV camera to clear doubts. We, are, we have said, the governor admitted uh, that uh, uh, initially denied that the soldiers were there, later admitted, said nobody died, later admitted that somebody died. And then a place that was swept, immediately the event happened. On Saturday of that same week, the governor visited that same place with his um, entourage. Only for on Monday, conspicuously in a, a, a platform that had already been cleared and swept, only for the minister to come and detect, uh, detected a camera you know, also throw, you know, a big hole and a big question mark in the, 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 the attitude and what government wants to achieve. And, and so when all of this happens, the only conclusion that a reasonable man would draw is that, oh, they are trying to doctor the video. So that's why all of a sudden a camera is uh, emerging. The camera's face was, uh, the camcoder's uh, lens was even closed. And so couldn't have been recording anything. So all of this, I, I don't think the people that are advising government are actually advising them well. Even if you want to add a script, this one is too glaring that, you know, something is fishy somewhere. I, I think it's interesting that you mentioned the attitude of government and how they're reacting to these issues. Because it's still, it appears that the government is still reacting in a manner that's infuriating the people and raising questions. For example, trying to clamp down on the media. What do you make about how the government has reacted to... The media you do understand that we and the uh, channels tv and two other media houses were <laughs> fined uh, and, uh, and then there's a move from the government to clamp down on social media what do you make of that in our democracy yeah um i for me like i said also it's laughable it is um it shows uh, government lack of sincerity in um uh, living by what they preach a government that says that they are ready to accept you know, the demands of the youth to end police brutality. Only for you to turn around and brutalize media houses for airing a, a, a protest that you have said is peaceful. For me, it's contradic contradictory. The only inference, like I always say, that a reasonable man can draw from that is that government is not sincere. You're saying that the media houses, the, 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 the attitude of the media houses, whose responsibility as enshrined in Section 22 of the Constitution, is to question government and also show what is happening. And you are now punishing the media houses for carrying out their constitutional responsibility. What it means is that the government has learned nothing and it's not ready to give justice. Secondly, I listened to Alaji Lai Mohammed, the Minister for Information, and um, I, I, I think, quite unfortunately, um, Alaji Lai Mohammed is still living in a digital age in this, um, you know, internet um, uh, 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 times. It is living, sorry, it's living in analog age in a digital environment. Analog, okay. He admitted, quickly, he admitted that now the entire globe is ruled by the internet. He also admitted that what most young people of these days, all they need is a phone and data. And with that, they can rule the world. And then the question I will ask Alaji Lai Mohammed. Knowing fully well the, the, the potency and the, the, the efficiency of the information superhighway in the hands of young people, how much of that has the government used to push it also, its own agenda or to push its own activities? It's either the government does not have an agenda or activities to push, and so they leave it, you know, for, for rumor mongers. And like they say, in the absence of information, rumor thrives. And when rumors start to thrive, even intellectuals are turned to convey your bet. And so, this is not, I, I tell you, it's, um, it's a tall order for if they think they can gag social media. Even international, uh, uh, adv more advanced countries have not been able to do that. Rather, what they have are arrangement with some of these uh, providers to censor most of the fake news. But to think that you can sit down in your one-story building and bring down a man who is sitting, seated, at a 100-story building, you are just joking. 
they, 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 I, I do not see, I do not think that government should be reactionary. They should be proactive. Make use of the social media also to reach out, to uh, 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 pass information, right. and not create social media right. to begin to antagonize or attack people who you feel you know, have contrary uh, opinion to that Very of government. Well, we're almost out of time. I'd like us to deal with the issue of uh, the palliatives now. It's generated quite a number of reactions, and it suggested the level of hunger and anger in the country. We've seen warehouses of governments being looted, and sadly, we've seen those of private individuals being looted as well. Now, based on the statements by the Niger Nigerian Governors Forum, the individual statements from different governors, and that of Kakovid, help me make sense of everything put together. Does it add up for you? You, you see, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't add up at all. And then, you know, another thing they do not know is that um, with a click of the button these days, you know, information is everywhere. The entire globe is watching what is happening in Nigeria. These palliatives were meant for your people. People who some of them are living less than, in le with less than a dollar a day. This food were meant for them. You warehouse them. You said you are waiting to share. Some said they were waiting to share them, you know, with the second wave. Second wave that you have not, you know, uh, seen. The first one, a lot of people were crying for food. And secondly, you know, the warehouse, if some of the foods are already going bad. So that means the food were not received, you know, just recently. Some of them were donated. It shows the selfishness and callousness on the part of most of these governments. And you see another thing. They are all united. It has nothing to do with APC or PDP. If they are all united to further fleece the people. Now, there seems to be a disconnect or dis disunity between those um, artisans that you call miscreant and the educated young ones. But the day the artisans and the, and, and the, uh, the, artisans, the thugs and the educated, internet-savvy young ones are united, I tell you, even those our small uh, tasse and small corolla will not be enough to protect us. All of us, all of us will be casualty. If care is not taken, if we do Mr. not call our government at the appropriate go, time. Um, I'm sure you've seen the statement or the reaction of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs on this issue where she's uh, suggested that this is some form of uh, exoneration for her and says she's forgiven her accusers. Does this really explain it? Because from my understanding and from what we do, on the, uh, some persons have tried to uh, clarify, the COVID uh, donations are different from that of the federal government. And I say this because Kakovid, according to their statement, said uh, they related with state governors and the FCT, had nothing to do with the federal government or the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. You, you see, we always take advantage of every crisis, and that's why government is never united. They are singing discordant tune. And like, you know, people would say, you know, when there's confusion, when... You, you, if you speak the truth always, you will be consistent. But when you lie from both sides of the matter, there will be inconsistency. Now the minister is saying, oh, I shared palliative. So with what is happening, you know, it's a vindication that actually shared. But we are seeing that almost all the palliative that have been looted are the ones shared by car COVID. Where is the federal government palliatives? Recently, the federal government, the minister also said she shared 5,000, 5, 20,000, 20,000 to the poor of the poor how many people got it in the entire country. You, she visited a flood victim recently and was giving them 20,000 naira at the 10,000 naira as the case may be. Of what use is that money to somebody who do not even have access to go grocery? So it, it shows how disconnected you know, our rulers or, uh, are with the people. So this is not a time to begin to talk about vindication. This is a time for sober reflection. This is a time for collective responsibility to say, we have fed the people, please give us another chance and we'll do it better. From now on, we'll first and foremost use ourselves to set example. Let us deal with the governors that have warehouse palliatives from the people. Let us deal with the ministers that did not allow this palliative to go around. And then Nigerians will be happy. Instead of coming to sing this connect tune and take praises where you shouldn't be, where you should be remorseful. So, Mr. Liberos Oshoma, I thank you so much for finding time to come and speak with me on hard copy. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Well, that's hard copy today. Send feedback to the email address and social media handle on your screen. And remember to catch this and past episodes on our website, channelstv.com, and our podcast, channelstv.com forward slash podcasts. I'm Terry Kumi. Goodbye.